Hello my soccer universe. Uh, typically I usually focus my videos on the action on the field. However, in a trigger happy league that is the Premier League, I think this will be a video with off the field talk and mainly one club, the blue guys from London that I definitely have to talk about. But you know, uh, I first of all want to say the two winners over this past one and a half rounds. We had many makeup games in the midweek. That's why I decided now to do this video. Plus, of course, because of the developments. But the two big winners are the team that I'm wearing, Aston Villa, who actually triggered one of the stories, and Newcastle United up there, who are having a really good restart after the international break and really solidifying their top four aspirations and at the moment before the break we would, would have said it is of course the top two Arsenal Man City nothing new there both of them winning then it's Manchester United and Newcastle is in a fight with Spurs mm -hmm. at the moment I would say Newcastle look more solid than Manchester United does but we'll talk about that uh, once we get to the game especially their head-to-head -head, which was very very impressive what the tunes showed there but we gotta talk firings uh you know there are some time slots where it's actually a good idea if you wanna get rid of a manager that you get a new one the international uh break is one of those periods and yes i have seen uh <laughs> some sometimes the argument yeah give the coach the international break to prepare his team and then at the next game they have to show Im 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 improvement. However, uh, especially in the Premier League, most players are anyway on international duty, so you cannot do much more. And on top of that, the um, fixtures right after the international break always throw up really crazy results. So there's no way that you can judge the work in that particular period. However, we had two seconds after this after this round, with the third one just about worked it. Uh, and the one that actually did it right, Crystal Palace, actually had a little bit of a turnaround and a complete change of fortunes, which is very, very interesting. So we had Leicester City getting rid of Brandon Rogers, which has been the writing on the wall. The timing maybe, as I said, a little bit questionable. Uh, and you know, if you don't really have another candidate in mind. Yeah, but on the other hand, you are now really, really down in the table. And I can actually see Brandon Rogers showing up in another club. But it's Chelsea there we have to talk about. I think everything that I've seen under, of the new ownership screams absolutely no idea what they're doing. The only thing that they're doing is splashing cash around. And I have a personal note to that as well, because Todd Bowley is also uh, you know an investor into my comp comp company why do i know it because uh, my company went um, public uh, i think it was last year two years ago and at the ring of the bell on nasdaq there is our company only with michael jordan and next to him is also tell todd bold and i'm thinking oh no every time i see it sees his picture i hope he has no say in what our company is doing but that's beside uh I think we can start from the beginning, <laughs> but I want to just say the firing of Tuchel. This was just Tuchel had a little bit sense of what he wants to do this team. He is a proper coach. Yes, he didn't maybe get the best out of Chelsea last season, but he is a proper coach. Pragmatic, but also with good ideas. Sacking him because you didn't want to have Ronaldo because he wanted to make a big splash, I think is the first point of idiocy. I don't think that the hiring of uh, Graham Potter was so ridiculous as it is portrayed now because I think we all had a high opinion of uh, what Harry, uh, what Harry Potter, Graham Potter, I'm not the only one who's, who does this, what Graham Potter has done at Brighton. Uh, but on the other side, I do get that. I mean, I, but I would have liked to hear these voices before. Brighton won, were playing well and had an outstanding start to the season that they now backed up. And I think the players definitely say, you know, it's not only the coach, it's also us. Uh, but they never finished really that high under Graham Potter, but they were kind of the 
hipsters uh, darling. And I still think that Grand Potter can get a really, really good job. I think Chelsea was just the wrong uh, position. I actually would like to see him at Spurs, for instance. However, now I think Spurs are scared of taking former Chelsea managers. So uh, there's one thing that is really, really odd. Already it did not work well, um, but you gave him a long contract, similar like what Nagelsmann got at Bayern Bayern Munich. See, give him at least until the summer and at least allow him to sort everything out. You gave him so many players. You botched, I mean, I, I don't want to say you botched the transfer, but the, the Hakim Ziyech thing is still a, a real oddity in my book. You have a bloated squad that is really hard, hard to manage. Yes, you're splashing the cash, but it's more or less, okay, uh, this player gar, uh, garners a lot of interest. Maybe we should get him. We outbeat everyone. And it just doesn't make any sense. This squad is put together. Yes, great players, great young players. Also, we have to question the financials with, uh, with the long contracts. But there is no plan behind it. And then you sack Potter after losing right after the international break makes no sense honestly give him some time and exactly if you don't have the succession in mind already yes Nagelsmann is suddenly free but Nagelsmann is not going to come immediately and I'm not sure if he will I mean we hear now Nagelsmann we hear uh, Luis Enrique the one thing that we do know and this is for for, for, for me this is the ultimate source of circus report yeah, they give themselves time until the end of, of the season. And meanwhile, we hire Frank Lampard. Yes, Chelsea legend. And I think he did a decent job and Chelsea couldn't buy any uh, young players. But as soon as he had stars, that caused some trouble. You're going back to Lampard, a man who also failed more or less at Everton. <sighs> Chelsea circus. That's all I, I, I can say. Let's leave the circus. Let's go back to what happened at the weekend. I mean, we would have talked usually about City against Liverpool, which would have been the highlight, highlight fixture over the past few years. This time around, not so much. I still uh, tried to watch it. And yeah, first half, City were the better team, missing ch ch chances. However, Salah gave Liverpool with the first chance uh, that the lead have uh, Julian Alvarez and can quickly equalize with a Grealish assist and it was Grealish who actually put the stamp on the second half where just City kicked in, in, in the next, next gear. Scored immediately after half uh, through the Bruyne Gundogan in a nice build build up. Um, also then scores, it's done and then Grealish gets his goal after a nice, you know, he sends the Bruyne back to him back in, in the internet. He was the outstanding player there. A real marker for City who looked uh, quite on a different level. Then Liverpool, which is not something we are used to, Klopp said, yeah, they were really, really lenient with us because this could have been really ugly. Uh, however, Arsenal was not deterred. Yes, they honestly didn't look that great against Leeds to begin with, uh, but take the lead through a penalty and then kick in, in the next year. Ben White, uh, Gabriel Jesus with another one, and then even Granit Xhaka in the 84th after Christensen had had the pull one back. Make it a 4-1 scoreline. So the top two kind of on the same uh, track and I think this will continue for, for, for a while. Arsenal is on a real win streak and even Manchester City, I think um, it will go on like this for a while. Uh, of the F afternoon results, I mean Bournemouth beating Fulham where Mitrovic now sent, uh, was for, for uh, eight games gone. Brighton and Brentford 3-3. I mean, that, that's the hipsters game. Uh, Crystal Palace look completely different. Scory, uh, I mean, shooting, shooting, shoot, shooting. After they didn't have a shot and goal for weeks. Beating Leicester then late 2-1. Forrest get a 1-1 against Wolves. Also, yeah, the, uh, Cooper also in danger. However, for now, he's still uh, <laughs> in charge. And then Chelsea losing to Aston Villa. And yes, Chelsea had a dominant performance. But the one thing that Chelsea cannot do is score at the moment. They literally, they can create a lot of things. As soon as they comes to scoring goals, that's where, where they fail. And then Aston Villa have actually a pretty good coach in Una Emery. No one really wants to admit that, but I think they have something there. And eventually, I think they will move up the table. I'm not sure if they will get to Europe this season already, but I think they could be in for a European uh, slot uh, rather sooner or later. Oli Watkins and uh, McGinn 
scoring the two goals. West Ham get a scrappy 1-0 over Southampton. Uh, resulted l shot them up the table because it's so tight on the bottom. But you know, <laughs> it's only temp temporarily. It's still very, very tight. Uh, get getting that, that winner. And then Newcastle completely outplaying Manchester United. And Manchester United without Casemiro, it has to be said. I think uh, Manchester United with and uh, without Kaka, Kaka, Casemiro are two different teams. Because, you know, uh, as much as I like Marcel Sabitzer, uh, he is not Casemiro by any stretch of the imagination. Neither are McTominay or Fred in there. So, Newcastle should have taken the lead before for them. I mean, if it wasn't for the Hairs, Wanda saves, uh, it could have gotten really ugly. I really like the 1-0. Uh, so ni ni nice, nice, nice play between... Um, Bruno Guimaraes, Sam Maxima, who puts it back to Willock and internet. It was absolutely a, a ping pong goal, but so nicely played. And then Callum Wilson uh, makes a second. 2 0 was flattering United, very, very much so. I actually saw him the Monday evening game, but that was a dreary affair uh, until Ducure sent off. Yes, he's shoving Kane and he hits the face. I think by the letter of the law, if you hit someone in, in the face, it can be a red card. When you see the replay, he hey, doesn't wanna hit him in the face. I think there should be maybe a distinction if you wanna punch someone in, in the face or if you just wanna shove someone away and by accident you hit the face. I think this distinction needs to be made. So I found this rather, rather harsh. And Kane was selling it. And say what, 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 what you want? Kane is more of a player in many ways that is not uh, the classically English stereotype, but he is more of a European continental player because he, I said it right during the international break, he's very, very, he's very, very good in the dark arts, honestly. As much as he's a great player, but he has that also up his repertoire. And yeah, so, so to beat. Uh, they, Everton then give up a penalty that Harry Kane expertly converts. Yeah, suddenly he was fit again. Uh, but it was not the end because Lucas Moura is get sent off for a horrific tackle. That was a red card, and that is a red card that should get a much longer suspension to what Ducure got. On on honestly, but then uh, Keane with a brilliant shot, the only really good action of Everton uh, since the first half, gets an equalizer in it. So a three game was actually then quite entertaining in the end overall uh, then midweek fixtures uh speaking of the really chelsea against liverpool liverpool what was that i mean you were so lucky to get out, out, out of this with a point uh, the, there was only a short period just before the beginning uh for uh, before the end of the first half where liverpool actually had a little bit control of the game but chelsea outplayed liverpool largely Scored him two goals, both of them though offsides, and that's the problem. And especially the one by Havertz, where it's so clear that he touched a, a ball with his hand uh, after, you know, it ricocheted off Ale uh, Alisson, he has it up there and then goes in into net. It's never gonna count because that's the new rule. Why are you celebrating? Well, can, can I say, I actually, this is a game I turned off uh, rather, rather quickly because it was not a good watch uh, at all. I'd rather watch the German Cup because Freiburg won at Bayern. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Uh, other games, we had um, uh, Brighton beat Bournemouth 2-0 away from home. Keeping the momentum going. Leeds United a big win 2-1 over not not Nottingham Forest. Also, at least... On the surface, looking now kind of safe. No, you're not, but you know, you get points. Leicester City losing at home 2-1 to Aston Villa. Aston Villa getting another win. Uh, Oli Watkins and Traore scoring the goals. The winner coming just before they have Harvey Barnes had equalized. And then was a yellow red for Dewsbury Hall in there as well. And then Newcastle with another marker. 5-1 at West Ham United. Uh, Callum Wilson, Joel Linton. Already after a few 50 minutes, it was 2 2 0. Kozuma pulls him back by second half again. Callum Wilson, Isaac, and once more, <laughs> Joe Ellington make it 5 1. Big, big, big result for the Toons. And as at the moment, you know, there are many ebbs and flows, and there are still many games to be played. But at the moment, Newcastle look like a, a sure thing for this fourth for one of the top four spots and yeah i think it's overall deserved 
I would say say what you want about the ownership stru- stru- structure, but I think that would be a deserved Champions League spot uh, overall. Um, and then we had Manchester United bouncing back with a 1-0 over Brentford. There was something. Yes, they needed to get the revenge. It was kind of a rumble stumble. However, in Austria, the news is that Sabitzer has his first Premier League scorer point. So ridiculous, the whole thing. Rashford, of course, scored, scoring the win in the 27th. And yeah, a little bit uh, making up for this horrific 4-0 loss at the beginning of the season. But you know, that's long, 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 long gone. What's really amazing about this season is that if you look at the, just at the managers at the beginning of the season and now, uh, it seems like a completely different season overall. Uh, so standings, as I said, up top it continues to be dual with slight advantage Arsenal because of the big um, uh, gap. But you know, City can always go on the run. Uh, United now go back ahead of Spurs again, Newcastle also in there and given that they both have a game in hand over Spurs, it seems like Spurs are very much an outside favorite. So I think the top four are the top four at the moment uh, with, a slight adv- with a slight chance for Spurs, but I don't see it. Uh, I would love to see Brighton make a run, but I think them qualifying for Europe will, will, will be big. The question is, will Liverpool make Europe? Or not. And Chelsea is already out. And then we have, of course, the big relegation zone, starting with Crystal Palace. Although I think if Crystal Palace get one or two to wins, they will potentially be all right. However, nah, maybe. But if you see Bournemouth has 27, Crystal Palace have 30. That's three points. Anyone can get relegated there. Anyone can get relegated there at, at the moment. Uh, if we look at the projected um, uh, finishes, Everton now move ahead of Bournemouth, uh, Forest uh, being down in Southampton, look at like, 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 like the one team that is really, really surefire and then the rest is somewhere in there. But I think this is almost the most exciting thing because up top we see we have kind of a title race, but Arsenal really look good. Uh, if they keep on winning the next few rounds, I think that's that. Then top four, yes, United and Newcastle look re- really good. Maybe Spurs can get in there. Liverpool at the moment make Europa League, but I am not sure because Liverpool look very tired, very a, a, a very spent squad. Maybe Villa can do something. We gotta see. Uh, I give you the next two rounds. I mean, the outstanding fixture uh, normally would be Liverpool against Arsenal, although Arsenal, I think, should do some something. I'm unfortunately will not being able to see the game because I'm watching a game. Uh, of Lask in the stadium, which I'm actually quite excited about. Uh, United Everton, that could be an interesting one, honestly. Uh, who else? Uh, City are uh, playing at Southampton, should be a win. Wolves, Chelsea, yeah, yeah. and Spurs, Brighton, I think that could be uh, one to look out for too. Uh, and the week after, you know, I give you all the fixtures there, but uh, Hammers against Arsenal looks like the one uh, in there. In any case, that was it from me from the Premier League, including a circus report. Again, I have to mention, I think the Zerbi is now the eighth longest serving Premier League manager. And he was appointed when uh, Tuchel was sacked. It's crazy. And even Klopp admits that he's only in place because of his stuff of the past, surely not for, because of the present. It's a crazy league. This trigger happy league, uh, it's just all about Papa Bataman. There's no long term stra- strategy for many of these clubs in there. And honestly, long term thinking usually outdoes short term thinking. Let's look at Arsenal. I'll leave you with that thought. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.